Hey guys, we're going to be looking at uh, solving first order differential equations in this session. Now, uh, this is a follow up to the general solutions um, to differential equations. So, this is where we're trying to find the particular solution. All right, so I guess the first thing you kind of need to know is with these things is you have a set of rules or set of ideas. So, the first one is uh, separating variables. So, what do I mean by this? I guess the first thing you kind of need to understand is uh, the first step would be is move all the x terms to one side and move all the y terms to the opposite side or the other side. Now we know that uh, the differential equation, the first order one anyway, will have will look like this. You know, it'll have dy dx. Now with differential equations or just with dy dx, it's not really a fraction because um, what it does is like you're when you write dy dx you're actually saying you have differentiated y with respect to x however what we can do is we can almost treat it like a fraction so we can actually separate dy dx um, so in other, in other words um, move dx where all the um, where all the x terms are so wherever you move the x terms move dx there and then move dy with all the y terms. Okay, now this might not make so much sense, but I'm going to do an example, and hopefully, I've got a couple of examples lined up, so hopefully you get the hang of it from there. All right, so moving on to the examples. So, in this example, I want to solve dy over dx is equal to 2x. Now, most of you guys would probably know how to do this straight away because you can actually see that um, 2x is just differentiation of um, x squared over 2. But anyway, how are we going to do it in this particular, um, particular way is we have dy dx is equal to 2x. Now there is no y to move around, but I know that um, dx, I can actually move it to the right-hand side where 2x is. So I can rewrite this as dy equals 2x dx. Now, I also know that dy is just simply saying integral of 1 dy, which means on the other side I need to integrate integral integrate as well, which would be 2x dx. Now, integrating 1, I'm going to get y, and integrating 2x, I'm going to get x squared, oh, sorry, I went too fast, x squared over 2 plus c. Sorry, just x squared plus c. But slow with the integration this morning. All right, so this is one of the ideas. Now I'm going to show another example, and um, let's see how separating the variables actually comes truly into play. So in the second example, um, I want to solve x dy dx equals to y. Now, as you can see, this is where problems start happening, because um, this part we really can't um, integrate straight away because there's actually a y function in there. So, like, you know, in the last example, we had dy dx equals 2x, and we can integrate it nice and easy to x squared. But in this case, we can't. So we're going to need to separate these variables. So writing down the equation first, I've got x dy dx equals y. So what I need to do is, remember I said that we want to separate all the x's, all the x's on one side and all the y's on one side to make things easier for us. So I've got x dy equals y. I'm just going to move dx to the other side. And now what I can do is I can get rid of the x and y, which means dy divided by y would equal dx divided by x. So once I have this, what I could do is I could integrate both sides. Now integrating the left-hand side, I'm going to get 1 over y dy equals integral of 1 over x dx. Now, if you remember our integration rules, if we have 1 over x, then it's going to become ln of x. So if we have 1 over y, this is going to become ln of y. And 1 over x is going to be ln of cx. Now, you might not be familiarized with this, because you might have been used with ln of um, x plus c. But I will explain how this cx also works out. Um, in, on the on the right hand side 
So anyway, just keep moving on with this. Once we have both ln's on, because they're ln on both sides, we can actually say that y is equal to cx. Now, having a look at this ln of cx, see, we know that ln of uh, cx could be written as ln of c plus ln of x. So, remember when you integrate, you get a constant. Now, in this case, we use c as a constant, but, you know, it really could be anything. So, what we do know that ln of c is actually, a con it's just a constant, but it's taken ln of that constant plus ln of x. Now guys, if you are not sure about this, um, how this works at this point, uh, just bear with me. I'll try and do a few more kind of ideas and see if it um, makes sense. Now what I could also do is do this another completely different way. So basically, I'll, I'm going to go from this step onwards and I'm going to do that along here which means 1 over y would be ln of y, which equals ln of x plus c. Let's say I want to go in this avenue, all right, instead of doing ln of cx. So if it was in this avenue here, what would happen is I need to get rid of the ln's. So to get rid of ln, I would actually use exponentials. So it will become e of ln of y Sorry about that. Let's just try this again. E of ln of y would equal E of ln of x plus c, and which means E and ln cancel out each other. So on the left-hand side, we're going to get y, and on this side, we're going to get E of ln of x and E of c. Now, the reason is, if you remember your index expressions, when you multiply with the same base, the two powers get added up, so... That's how I can actually split this up. Now, that means E of C, well, exponential of a constant, is still going to be a constant. So, except I'm going to replace this E of C. Well, E of ln of x would actually just be x first. And E of C is just a constant. Let's just say it's C1. It's like a different number. Which means simplifying this, we're going to get y equals C1x. I guess the point I'm trying to make is, is because it's a constant, we are we can use exponentials, we can use logs of it. I mean, no matter what you do, it at the end of the day, you're going to have a C in there somewhere. And if you want to use it for a particular solution, is that without that information, we will not be able to figure out. We will not be able to figure out the particular solution. So they'll have to give you some sort of information. All right, let's have a look at one more example. Okay. So in this one, we want to solve dy dx equals to y. So rearranging things, we're going to have dy over y equals dx. And integrating this, we're going to get 1 over y dy equals integral of 1 dx. So integrating 1 over y, we're going to get ln of ky. Now, again... Right, let's just do this first. And integral of 1 would be x. Again, you could have actually done this two ways. You could have actually done ln of y equals x plus c. And you'd find that still in the end of the day, you're going to end up with the same sort of equation. So, in, sorry, not integrating it. Um, taking the exponential of this, we can actually say ky is equal to e of x. Or y equals some const, or k1 e of x. I mean, the reason I put k1 is because we can say k1 is just 1 over ko. You know, it's just another constant. There we go. But I'm going to do this another method as well to show you how we kind of end up with the same kind of answer. So where that integral sign is, I'm going to do it in a different way. So I'm going to have 1 over y dy equals integral of 1 dx. But this time, I'm going to do it as ln of y equals x plus c. So you notice how I've done two different ways here. So with ln of y and x plus c, what I could do is take exponential of the value. So I'm going to get e of ln of y would be e. And then on this side, e of x plus c, well, that's just what it's going to look like. Now from this point onwards, I can split up e of x and c. So I get y equals e of x multiplied by e of c. 
Because remember, when you multiply index expre expressions, the powers get added up. So, and now I can say from this point that E of C is some constant. So in this, say in this example, I'm going to call it K1. And what you notice is Y is equal to K1 times E of X. And what you notice is that both of these equations are the same equations. So it doesn't matter which way you go, but it's just, you know, in the end it'll all just work out. Okay, so that's how you kind of um, start separating the variables. Um, once you do this part, now we go into the next phase, the actual phase where we try and find particular solutions. All right, I'm sorry about the long video, guys, but it's just, this is a bit of, um, quite a bit of explaining to do how you can actually end up with two different ways of getting to the answer, but in the end, you'll get to the answer. All right, uh, that's all from me this session. Thanks for watching, guys.